Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know. <laughs> Y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all had a wonderful week. I hope everybody is enjoying this weather. I know we've had a cold front here in Florida and it's been like 40 something degrees. It's supposed to get hot again next week though, but I hope you guys are enjoying the weather and I hope you guys are planning on a nice, relaxing weekend. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the case of Suzanne Morphew. And this is so intriguing to me, you guys. I mean, it just really is. If y'all have not heard about this, just make sure you stay all the way to the end because it's definitely got some twists and turns. Suzanne Morphew went missing back in 2020. She's a 49-year-old mother of two. She had two daughters whom she was very, very close with, and she had a husband named Barry Morphew. Suzanne was considered to be very beautiful. She was very active. She rode bikes. She, you know, worked out, took care of herself. Suzanne and her husband, Barry, had another social media perfect life. I mean, they were high school sweethearts and this, everything seemed perfect. They had it going on. So when she went missing in 2020, rumors started swirling and investigators eyes went straight to her husband. However, because Suzanne was never found, prosecutors ended up dropping the charges against her husband and she was just missing at that point up until recently when Suzanne was found. So I'm gonna do like I typically do. I'm gonna tell you guys the whole entire story from the best of my ability with the public information that is already out there. I'm not a professional. Go do your own research, form your own opinions. Just don't show hate to anybody anywhere. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you guys my opinion and what I think could have happened. So let's just start at the beginning. Suzanne Morphew was 49 years old and living in Maysville, a small town just outside of Salida, Colorado. Suzanne was born and raised in Alexandra, Indiana, where she met Barry in high school. Barry was the star baseball player in high school and was even drafted, but an injury ended his professional baseball career. Barry and Suzanne both went to Purdue University after high school, and the two of them got married in 1994 and would go on to have two daughters. And then Barry goes on to starting his own business, a landscaping business, and Suzanne went on to be a teacher. As Barry's landscaping business took off and became quite successful, this is when Suzanne decided to quit working as a teacher and become a full-time stay-at-home mother, and she loved this job. She got to spend a lot of extra time with her girls. From the outside looking in, it seemed like they had a perfect life. However, rumors did swirl that behind the scenes, Suzanne and Barry had trouble. Suzanne had actually been diagnosed and beat cancer twice. She had went through a lot with chemo and medications, and I mean, it was really hard on her and the whole entire family. And there was also rumors of different problems that could have been going on behind the scenes between the couple. Now, now, allegedly in 2018, Suzanne and Barry decided that they were going to start over fresh, move to a new place and work on their marriage. So this is when the family moved to Maysville to be closer to their oldest daughter while she attended college. By 2020, Suzanne and Barry's oldest daughter was 23 and their youngest was 17. The family wasn't really known in the community, however, there were rumors in the community that Barry and Suzanne were having problems in their marriage. And that is bizarre to me. Like if the community doesn't even really know you that well and you haven't even been living there for a long time, but yet there's already rumors that there's trouble in the marriage, seems bizarre, but nevertheless. On May 8th of 2020, Suzanne allegedly sent a text message to her sister and said that her marriage between her and Barry had become 
emotionally and physically abusive. She also allegedly told her sister that she wanted out of the marriage, but that Barry absolutely refused. Then just two days later, on May 10th of 2020, Barry said that he woke up at around 4 a.m. to go to Denver for work. Barry said that Suzanne was still sleeping at the time that he left and that the two girls were on their way home from a church camping trip. Now, allegedly the girls did try to get a hold of their mother that morning. That way they could tell her happy Mother's Day because it was Mother's Day but they couldn't get a hold of their mom. It seemed like maybe they weren't too much worried about it. They thought maybe she was off riding bikes, you know, exercising, doing what she loved to do, and that they had plans to spend Mother's Day evening with her anyways. The girls continued to call their mother, and this is when they started to get worried because they were not hearing back from her, and that was not like Suzanne at all. So then they called their dad, Barry. Now, Barry told them that he was not home. The last time that he saw Suzanne was at 4 a.m. when he got up and left to go to Denver. And so he called the neighbor and asked one of the neighbors to go over to the house and check on Suzanne. When the neighbor went over to the Morphew house to check, he called Barry back and told him that he saw Suzanne's car was in the garage, so he left. But then Barry specifically asked this neighbor to go back to the house and check and see if Suzanne's bike was there. The neighbor went back to the house and then called Barry and said, nope, her bike is not here. I don't see it anywhere. This is when Barry asked the neighbor to call 911 and report Suzanne missing. The police came out immediately and began to search for Suzanne. The following Sunday, dive teams searched waterways and volunteers on foot searched an area one mile away from the house. They were searching this area because an item believed to be Suzanne's was found. And it was off of the side of this highway. This is where they found Suzanne's helmet, like the one that she would wear while biking. Investigators then believed that whoever abducted Suzanne took her helmet off of her and threw it out the window on the highway, like, you know, driving down the highway and threw it out. So at this point, this is the only evidence or the clue that they had of Suzanne was this helmet on the side of this highway. However, not long after, at the bottom of a ravine, this is where they found Suzanne's bike. Now, because Barry was Suzanne's husband, he was considered a suspect. We see this all the time. They are always looking at the people closest to the person that goes missing. However, Barry started showing like strange behavior. And this is when the investigators not only considered him a suspect, but they considered him the prime suspect in the disappearance of his wife, Suzanne. Barry even posted a video on Facebook that a lot of people thought was just bizarre. Oh, Suzanne, if anyone is out there that can hear this, that has you, please, we'll do whatever it takes to bring you back. We love you, we miss you, your girls need you. No questions asked, however much they want. Some people thought that his body language was off because he was shaking his head from side to side. And during the search of Suzanne and Barry's home, investigators found Suzanne's sunglasses and her hydro pack that she would always wear when she took a bike ride. So for her to leave the house without her sunglasses or her hydro pack seemed very odd. It was something that she would not typically do. Then there was a shocking discovery that was made in the master bedroom. Investigators found a spy pin that was made to record things. Investigators found out that the spy pen was given to Suzanne to try to record Barry having an affair. However, this spy pen kind of backfired because although it was given to Suzanne to catch Barry having an affair, what it caught was Suzanne actually having an affair. See, allegedly, Suzanne was having an affair with a man named Jeff that she knew from high school. Suzanne and Jeff had allegedly had a one-time fling a long time ago, but hadn't spoken to each other since until Suzanne reached out to Jeff on Facebook in 2018. After that, they talked every single day. It took investigators six months to track down Jeff. Jeff lived in Michigan and had a wife and six children. After hearing about Suzanne's disappearance, Jeff deleted all of his social media. Now, when he deleted his social media, of course, of course, investigators went to him and was like, 
Why would you do that? What are you running from? What are you hiding? And this is when allegedly Jeff said that the reason why he deleted everything is because he did not want it to get out that him and Suzanne were having like this affair and that he did not want to make her look bad because remember, she's missing at this point and he also didn't want his family to find out because again, he was married with six children. Now, investigators said that Jeff did cooperate with them. He answered all their questions and you know, did everything that they asked him to do. And Jeff was not a suspect. Jeff also willingly provided his DNA, his cell phone, and all of his passwords. When investigators began to dig more into Jeff, this is when they found out that him and Suzanne had actually been on multiple vacations together. This wasn't just some Facebook fling. I mean, they were actually meeting up and going on trips together. They even talked about moving out of the country together. Jeff said he was in Michigan that weekend and his alibi was indeed verified. And again, he was not a suspect. Suzanne had been texting Jeff all day on May 9th, the day before she went missing, all the way up to when Barry got home from work. This is when investigators decided to look into Barry's phone activity. Barry's phone shows that he was at work for most of the day and text Suzanne when he was on his way home. At this exact time, Suzanne was flirtatiously texting with Jeff. Suzanne either did not see or just didn't respond to Barry's texts. Now, investigators were able to like basically track the movement of Barry's phone this day. Now, mind you, they've got a pretty big really nice house that they live in. And when they started to track Barry's phone, they saw that it was moving all around this house this evening. When Barry was questioned about it, he said that he was chasing chipmunks. However, investigators did not find any evidence of chipmunks or him chasing them. So they began to believe that him and Suzanne were probably fighting. Then when things started getting very strange is when the investigators found a clear capped tube in the dryer at the Morphew house. They believe that it was a needle cap for a tranquilizing dart that they believe was used to tranquilize Suzanne. No dart gun was found at the home, but Barry told investigators that he was an expert when it came to tranquilizing deer to steal their antlers and illegally cell. Investigators believed that this could explain why Barry's phone was all over the place. It was believed that he could have been chasing Suzanne around after he shot her with a tranquilizing dart. It is said that it takes like four minutes or so in order for a person or even an animal to, you know, for the tranquilizing dart to have full effect. So if he would have shot her with this tranquilizing dart, she could have seen it, been running around, trying to get away before it paralyzed her. Also, sometimes the way that these tranquilizing darts hit a, a, a living being, sometimes it does kill them. It could have killed her if this happened. Detectives would also find a deleted text on Barry's phone from a couple of days before Suzanne's disappearance, saying that she was done with him and wanted to end things civilly. When questioned, Barry said that him and Suzanne actually had a really great night together on May 9th and that they went out to dinner, they came home and they did the deed and that everything was great between the two of them. But investigators discovered that Barry's phone was on airplane mode from 2.47 p.m. around the time that he got home from work to 10.17 p.m. that night. Because of this, investigators could not get any data from Barry's phone. So they decided to look into Barry's Ford truck. Now, I did not know that they could do this, you guys. This is crazy. It's kind of cool in one aspect. It's definitely eye-opening and it's like wow they really can find out anything about us so they they went into barry's ford truck into the computer system now these computer systems keep a certain type of record of when you open your truck door when you close it where you go where you stop like why didn't i ever think about that these vehicles now have computers in them they're keeping records Anyways, they went into the Ford truck and they got the records of the movement of the truck. The truck's data showed that the truck was put in reverse at around 9.30 p.m. and moved closer to the house. Investigators believe that this is when Barry loaded Suzanne's body into the truck. The truck doors were recorded as opening and closing at around 3.30 a.m. Now remember, he told investigators in the beginning that he woke up at 4 a.m., 
but the truck told on him that the doors were opening and closing at 3.30 a.m. Like, that is wild. Now, when Barry was questioned on the direction that he took to Denver that morning that he said that he, you know, got up at 4 a.m. and all of that stuff, he said that he took a left when he usually takes a right because he was chasing an elk. So, I mean, you guys can already see this weird pattern, right? Like, all these weird things, the text message about her not wanting to be with him anymore, the affair that she was having, him coming home, his phone being on airplane mode. It's showing that he was like running around all over the house. The clear cap that was found in the dryer that is believed to be a tranquilizing dart. The truck's computer telling on him. The truck told that he backed up to the house. The doors were opening and closing at 3.30 a.m. And then he just happened to take a left turn in order to go and chase an elk, which also happened to be in the same direction that Suzanne's helmet and bike was found at. His electronics, along with some security camera footage, showed that Barry stopped at multiple locations to drop off trash in different places. He stopped at a bus stop, a hotel, a McDonald's, a commercial dumpster, and then back to the hotel that he was staying at. When investigators questioned Barry, he said that this was normal for him. He said he did not like paying dumpster fees, and so that he would go around from place to place, putting trash in different bins in order to avoid the dumpster fee. This brings us back to when the girls were calling their dad saying that they could not get a hold of their mother. Investigators were able to obtain surveillance video from the hotel Barry was staying at and it showed that when Barry found out that Suzanne couldn't be found, he didn't immediately head home. He first dropped off a shovel with one of his employees. When one of his employees was interviewed, they said that Barry was acting totally normal that day. He wasn't like in a panic that his wife was missing or any of that and it was also said that somebody went into his room and they smelled a very strong bleach smell like his room at the hotel. Barry eventually headed home that day at 6 p.m. and investigators also found all kinds of scratches on Barry's body. So then Barry was eventually arrested. Now you guys can see from this point of view the evidence that they had against him, all circumstantial evidence, okay, all circumstantial at this point, no, no DNA. Even at this point, they can't even find Suzanne's body. They've only found her bike and her helmet and all of these other things, but nevertheless, they went ahead and arrested him. Andy, Suzanne's brother, said that Barry had actually told him a couple theories that he had of things that could have happened to his wife, but Andy said that these theories that he had just were absolutely ridiculous and that he believed that they were impossible. Like, allegedly, Barry told Suzanne's brother that she could have fell down that ravine and, you know, she could have injured herself and died th that way, but... Suzanne's brother was like, well, no, there's no body. How, how could that have happened? Where's her body at? And then allegedly Barry said, well, maybe a wild animal, a wild animal got her and drug her off and, you know, ripped her to shreds or whatever. And Suzanne's brother, Andy was like, yeah, but there was no blood. Like this doesn't make any sense. Like why would her bike be there? No other trace of her, no other DNA, no blood. I mean, if you fall down one of them deep ravines, you're going to scratch your knee, your elbow or something, it seems like, right? Barry was officially arrested in May of 2021 for first degree murder, tampering with a human body, possessing a dangerous weapon and trying to influence public servants. Investigators allege that Barry tried to hunt and control Suzanne like an animal after she insisted on leaving him. They believe that Barry killed Suzanne the night of May 9th and disposed of her bike, helmet, and body. According to Barry's arrest, affidavit, days after Suzanne went missing, he refused to take a polygraph test. Authorities also allege that Barry submitted a fraudulent vote on his wife's behalf. You know, like all the mail-in ballots? Well, allegedly, he uh, put down his wife's vote for Donald Trump and then would later go on to say that he knew that Suzanne would have wanted to vote for Trump, so he just wrote it down and signed it and sent it in anyways. Barry pled not guilty to all of the charges and in September of 2021, he posted a $500,000 cash bond and was released. Now, even though Barry was out on bond and definitely proclaiming his innocence, he still had to wear an ankle monitor and he had like other stipulations that he could not reach out to 
to certain people that were involved in this case. This is when Barry's defense team really started putting in work. The plastic needle cap that was found in the dryer at the Morphew home was swabbed for DNA and found to not have any of Barry's DNA on it. The hotel that Barry was staying at in Denver the day of May 10th told investigators that they weren't surprised that Barry's room smelled like bleach because it was right above the hotel's indoor pool and there's a strong smell of chlorine. And most shocking of all was another male's DNA that was found. This other male's DNA was found in Suzanne's car and the male's DNA did not match Barry or Jeff, the guy that she was having this affair with. And this DNA was partially matched to three other SA cases that had happened in other areas. Not only that, but the judge at this point also determined that the prosecution missed too many deadlines. So in April of 2022, the judge banned 14 experts from the prosecution prosecution side from testifying. Because of this, the judge ended up dismissing all of the charges. Now, they dismissed it with prejudice, which means that they can recharge him again if more evidence came out or if Suzanne's body was found. And Barry walked out of the jail a free man. Barry, how does it feel? Barry Morphew was flanked by his family. His mother and sister were there, but closest to his side were his two daughters. While Barry is smiling, you can see his youngest daughter is beaming. And then in an interview with Good Morning America, the two girls explained why they were standing by their father. It's been an emotional roller coaster, but we feel like we can finally take our first steps in healing, which is a blessing. And yeah, we, kn we just know our dad better than anyone else. And we know he was not involved in our mom's disappearance because what they've done is not fair. And we're never going to stop looking for our mom. And then May of this year, 2023, Barry filed a $15 million lawsuit against law enforcement agencies. But then, and this is why this has all been brought up again, investigators, while they were looking in an area searching for another missing person about 40 miles away from where Suzanne went missing, they found Suzanne Morphew's body. Her bones were located in a remote field of sagebrush and grasses. The county coroner said that they confirmed Suzanne's identity with dental records and that it appeared Suzanne's remains had been buried in a shallow grave before being scattered. They didn't comment on the condition of Suzanne's body or the cause of her death. And Barry released a statement after hearing Suzanne had been found saying that he and his daughters are struggling with immense shock and grief. Now it does seem like investigators do possibly think that Barry still did this. There's people that think he did and that he didn't. What do I think? I think that it is very, very highly likely that Barry did it. But I think that the prosecution will probably never get a conviction if he did do it. I don't know. Because of that male DNA. I mean, talk about a curveball for the prosecution. If the male DNA is partially connected to three other unsolved SA cases, that is the most reasonable. I mean, that is like, that's reasonable doubt all day long. But I think it's very strange, all of the other stuff. What do I think happened? I think that it is highly likely that allegedly, in my opinion, I don't know, I don't know these people. I'm just giving my opinion on stuff that's already out there, that it is possible, especially with the text message that Suzanne sent her sister and the affair that she was having, that Barry caught her and things either got out of hand or something like that. I think it's very suspicious, but that male DNA, unless a prosecution can explain that away and find some real bombshell evidence, I don't think that they're gonna ever have a case against him, which is crazy. So I don't know, but then again, who knows this male DNA, they could, they could make a match later and figure out who this male, this male DNA belongs to and then find other connections that connects him to Suzanne and then figure out exactly what happened to her. It may not be Barry. It may be this other person, but even if it is Barry, because of that DNA, I don't think that they'll ever be able to get a conviction on him. So what do you guys think? Have y'all heard about this? This is so sad. I feel bad for the two girls who lost their mother and on Mother's Day too, they're coming back from church camp. They're thinking that they're going to spend Mother's Day evening with their mom and she disappears and she 
never returns. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think Barry did it? Do you think it's somebody else? Do you think she was having multiple affairs with multiple people? What do you guys think? Y'all let me know in the comment section down below. Other than that, I love you guys. Thank you all so much for being here. And I will see y'all next week. Have a great weekend. Love you guys. Bye.